to call to order that is today, uh, September 10, 2024. Um, may I get a motion to approve or end or amend the agenda? So moved. Okay, can I get a second? Thanks, Steve. Uh, then I need a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, special meeting on August 7th. Sure, so moved. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Uh, new business. Um, we we had I had this conversation with Lyle a couple of months ago, and um, what you call it? It pertains to when a new person in town buys or sells a piece of property, and they are attached to the sewer line, is to have that line inspected. And then right. this way, it's one more way of us keeping track of what's where and where the laterals are and things like that. So I reached out to Randy DeBella, who has um, taken over for Jeff Sankowitz as, town, as the attorney for the Sewer Commission. I mean, he's also the town attorney. But he wrote this regulation. And I, I can't remember. We sent it out to you, but I'm going to read it. It's really short. And then I'm going to send it out to you. But I'm sure, I mean, it's it's kind of a no-brainer. But prior to closing the sale, transfer, or change of ownership of any property within the so-called fire district, the owner, purchaser, or proposed get grantee of the subject premises shall arrange and pay for an inspection of the lateral line or line serving the premises. Inspection shall be conducted by a qualified private professional or the Kensor Commission, and a report of the inspection results shall be reported to the commission. So I just I want to get that included in regulations so that when property properties change hand in the middle of town that it can happen. And I think it shouldn't be the fire district because I forget, I forget it's like a, it's a different name for the business district now. But Kath, do you want to put or or did the attorney want to put? any kind of a deadline on it to say 30 I would days say prior after to closing prior to the closing oh, it did say prior to the closing i'm sorry um no it doesn't but as soon as yeah prior to the closing of the sale okay perfect oh. thanks but yeah. i know it's not the fire district anymore ricky what's the name of it's is it village district you're on mute oh uh, kent what just town of kent <laughs> i don't think well, we have a well, it used to only be, may have a district. Well, it's like it's and, like that. Uh, it's the district that goes from basically the uh, greenhouse up to the community house, then over to Kent School, and then basically to this side, you know, to the Route Seven side of Kent. I don't. I think I don't know why I want to say it's called R, uh, Rural District Two or something like that, or Rural, rural District One. But it's there's a there is a name for it, so it's not. I think that's know, only for zoning but if you want to pick up on it then we could but. i bet i think that would probably be a good idea to just make it so that it's all consistent so but i also if you look at that map i think there's like three or four districts within the town you just described so. yeah well it goes out to maple street extension too it covers that it's area all the same district number though. yeah so it's whatever the district whatever we label that area as or anybody on the, you know, the sewer line, I guess. I mean, I'm sure he's going to have a, a better way of describing it. But I just thought that was really important. This way we can trace when something changes. And then we have, we just can, this way the maps get just constantly updated, which is, which is, you know, what we hadn't done with when, uh, you know, in the past. So. Are we going yeah. to have any different regulations for a different district though? Or is it just going to be for any user? Oh, I I would don't don't you think it should just be for anybody any user I mean if it's a whether it's business or residential when a property changes hand we should at least have an inspection so that we know I mean some of those laterals are I mean I got a letter from uh, oh God what's her name she lives out on Maple Street Extension she couldn't believe the the uh, sewer lines were that old and I or you know up to her house and I said. I wouldn't doubt it that they're like, a, you know, 50 years old, at least, because they redid when she tapped into the sewer line. The, they moved the water hook up for her name. Uh, Gwendolyn Deneif is her name. Do you know where she is on Maple Street Extension? She's Maple kind of, Street Extension is all new. Yeah, but not from the house down to the, from her house down to the, 
connection? That would be because there was never a sewer over there until we put it in a few years ago. No, I know, but she evidently had some water line at some point. Oh, maybe and, the water line, yeah. And she's when they hooked it up, she then she connected, and I said, "Believe me, those those lines were, you know, your water line has probably not been touched since they built the house." Right. So I'm just saying, any of those, I will get a better definition of that that whole district, but I think that would be really smart of us this way we can trace when we have new owners and mm -hmm. you know just make sure their lines are functioning that's all so that they don't have a problem right so okay i will get that off to uh mandy to have him check on that um does anybody have any else they want anything else that they want to add in on that at all mm -mm. nope okay. uh old business motor riot this was totally my fault i wrote to i finally found the regulation i was looking for and the maps i was looking for for him for plumbing design and i told him he has until a week before the next meeting to make sure he gets us and that would be it's like the meeting on the 8th so i told him a week prior and i said please don't wait to the the day before that that deadline but they will have to draw proper plumbing um, lines and drawings and like that for us for the sewer commission. So I gave him a one month extension because it was my fault for not getting him the information in time. So they'll be on the agenda for next meeting. Okay. Um, it's been a pretty quiet month as far as I know. I mean, I've been pretty quiet around here. So I'm going to turn it over to Lyle. He can fill us in for the last two months because we didn't have a proper meeting last month. And you're muted, Lyle. <laughs> Turn that there button. Go. There you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Alyssa just said, uh, it's a two-month meeting, so I'll start with um, our, our July readings. We had 1.88 million gallons total flow through the plant, 63,000 gallons per day average, 956,000 of the, the total came from Kent School. Our average BOD and total suspended solids removal rate was at 99%. In August, we had 1.91 million gallons flow through the plant. That's uh, 62,000 gallons per day average. 1.25 million gallons came from Kent School, and the BOD and total suspended solids removal rate were at 98%. Currently have one bed in use, three are cleaned and ready for use. We had two floats fail at the Judd Avenue uh, pump station they were replaced uh, we um, with millings we uh, filled in the large potholes in the septage receiving area of the driveway and, uh, it seems to be working out uh, excellent we jetted the bridge street line to verify no blockages um, Ira, Ira at the package store was having an issue with his his sewer lateral and like Alyssa was saying you know if we you know if he had that inspected originally you know, he might have been to alleviate the problem, uh, okay. you know, or, or find out that he was going to have a problem. Um, but anyways, we jetted it and it was clear. Uh, and the ignition coil failed on the Alto Zero mower. So we replaced several wear items as well as the ignition coil when that was down for repair. Billy McCann mowed the field this past weekend. We had a, another expense with the John Deere tractor. We had to replace the battery in that. Uh, Grant continues his studies in preparation for his class two licensing exam. I'm trying to hear back from uh, the person who's doing a class again at the Torrington water uh, wastewater plant to see if it's going to be more. His last class was geared towards, it was a one and two course, but it was geared more towards the one. I'm hoping this one is geared more towards the two. Um, if, if it is, he's going to attend that. Uh, the jet trailer broke, that's down for repair currently being um, evaluated by Grant, and we did the annual cleaning of the pump stations with the help of New Milford Septic. And that's what I have. Okay. Uh, anybody have anything to add into that at all? Nope. Okay. Um, Kathy, Kathy was, there, well, not there, but she saw me when we were replacing those floats. Yep. We like, talked. who are those people working late at night? <laughs> What's going on down there? Nice, yep. nice evening lighting there. Okay. Right. Uh, Barbara, you're up. 
Okay, I am sharing my screen. Hopefully you can all see it. I did send the reports out very late. I apologize. A little bit busy trying to work on audit stuff. And there really, as you alluded to earlier, there's not much activity. It's really early in the year for financial highlights. Um, but we're basically keeping up with the budget. We're pretty much right on target as far as the revenue goes. The expenditures are pretty much right on target. A little bit of an outlier is the medical insurance, but that's just because I think I paid September in August. So it's actually three months of insurance in there instead of two. Payroll's right on target. So it's all looking good at this point. We're operating at a nice, healthy surplus, but it's, again, it's pretty early in the year for any highlights. The balance sheet, same presentation as previous periods, August 31 of this year versus August 31 of last year. Our cash is basically neck and neck where it was a year ago. I haven't booked the depreciation for the year, so these reports are still preliminary because once I book the depreciation for last fiscal year, these numbers right here in the report will change a little bit. I have to add in the improvements that we did as well with the ARPA money. Is there any money remaining in that account? Yes, but it's for the engineering for the okay. tank. Okay. I, just, I knew that, but I just, just couldn't remember how much was left. Yep. And then the third report is the disbursement journal. And I didn't think to include the July disbursement journal. Uh, so if anybody wants to see that, I will send it around. But again, it's pretty much mirrors this August disbursement journal, standard activity, standard expenses. There was a bunch of benefit assessments that were collected on the Maple Street property, the 16,000, but that was turned over to the town for the agreement with the Maple Street debt mm -hmm. service. So that's an in and an out, as you can see down below here. But other than that, that's it. All right. Anybody have any comments or questions or whatever? Nope. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, we, we just you. bought we just bought four pair our pails of polymer for the press, so that that bill will be coming. Okay. Just wanted to let Barbara know that's on the horizon. All right. So may I get a motion to approve the check register? Should I throw July in as well, or gonna wait? Yes. You want... Oh, just you want to do July. two separate ones? You no, I didn't separate. provide July. So if you want, I'll send that around and you can approve July at the next meeting. That way you'll at least have some eyes on it. Okay. So just approve August. All right. So just may I get a motion to approve the August check register? Sure. So moved. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Okay. Um, no, Debbie. I'm just curious how she's doing on making sure no one's delinquent or really way behind. There's no BART. Um, I have... I. I have one thing I'm sort of kicking around um, with uh, the maintenance agreement that is up at um, Ken Affordable, uh, the Brookwoods and Ken Affordable Housing in Saddle Ridge. Um, we were going to, um, which I'm going to call it, uh, include, I guess it's called the Kent Collection in that, in one of those group funding things because they have multiple use over there and the condos and stuff. And in the past, we have asked them to put um, all the other ones, the other previous ones have put in a $30,000 sort of cushion so that if something drastically should happen that there's money there and then it earns money in the savings accounts that we have for them that are based here in Kent. So I reached out to Randy to discuss whether he thought that was, you know, enough money to be in those accounts. I mean, if something really drastically happened to any of them, I think um, I can't remember on the total on the on the the report there, but I know Brookwoods has a bunch of money in there. I think Barbara, what does Brookwoods have in their fund? Do you know offhand? Hold on a second, and I'll look. They've got thirty-four thousand dollars. Okay, and. and 
Um, Kent Affordable Housing has 24,000 and Saddle Ridge Estates has 165,000. Okay, I knew there was. Okay, so I was just curious if the commission thought, I mean, I know we're looking into reaching out to, I guess it's Victorian Square, but I mean, and they don't have to front load, you know, they can, you know, put in, you know, a payment plan of, you know, 5,000 a month, a year or whatever, however they want to work it. I, we, we can all work that detail out, but does everybody in the commission on the commission feel that that is an ample amount of money to start off an account? And then this way, if something happened, they would have funding to repair it. I mean, it's kind of a, yeah. Rhonda. I mean, they, if they want to send, you know, 5,000 a year to put into this account, I mean, I'm fine with that. If they want to pay for the whole thing all at once, they can do that too. But I think because they're the same type of system as the other three, that I think they should, you know, should have an account set up for that just in case something happened. And, you know, it's not to say John McPhee is going to own that forever, but this way, if something did happen, that they would be prepared. I think we're a lot... We don't have to go overboard on that because basically all that is a pump chamber and then it pumps it into the sewer system. The other ones all have septic fields and everything. All tanks at every house okay. and everything. Oh. All right. So, so, so wouldn't it wouldn't need to be as be much. Yeah. No, it'd be nowhere near as much as replacing the system at Brookwood, say, if that failed. If we put, we asked them to put what do you think would be a reasonable amount of money to put into that? I mean, if he had five uh, or ten thousand dollars, or at least to start, I mean, that okay. it's just we find out what it costs and to replace the pump chamber and use that for a base and go off of that. But... Okay. Is everybody in agreement with that? I mean, yeah. can I guess we need to find out what something like I I do not know what something like that runs so. Maybe Lyle, you could possibly look into seeing what it would something like that might run. And then we can at the next meeting just have more of a conversation on it. And then I can send that information off to Randy and then he can send them a letter regarding that. Okay. Well, Charles is for pennies and pounds. I'll come in I'll come in the box. He's talking to somebody else. Well, anyway. That was that was the only other thing that I've been sort of fiddling around with here, and he was away, and then we didn't have to bring him there. The oh, so I'll last month. So, anyway, yeah, it's down right. there by the tennis house. Anyway, um, does anybody have anything else to add? This is like such a light meeting. I can't believe it's. <laughs> I don't even think it's lasted ten minutes. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, if no one has anything else in, I will get Lyle, you'll get me that information. I'll talk to Randy to see how he feels on this. And we'll draft something and get that out to everybody to have us have everybody take a look at it for the next meeting. And then Motor Riot will be back with their plumbing plans for next month. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Yep. Sounds good. Adjourned at 448. Okay. Thank Thanks. you all. Yep. Bye. Bye. Next bye. Month. Take care, everybody. Bye.